Welcome back everyone. I hope you're having a great day. And in this episode, we're going to take a look at a dividend growth company that I've had in my financial freedom portfolio for over the past year, but I haven't really talked about on the channel. This company has a low starting yield, but continues to grow that annual dividend payment at a massive rate year after year. This is one of my fastest dividend growth company in terms of annual expansion. And right now my current yield on cost sits at only 0.7%. And the company we're going to focus on in this episode is ticker V, which is Visa. They currently trade for $235 per share and are up by over 23% on the past one year chart. And we can see within my current portfolio, this is one of the top holdings. I own 21 shares with a current market value just below $5,000. And I am currently up 29.6% on this holding. And Visa is the leader of the debit and credit card industry, and I'm sure everyone watching has used their product or their service and may have a Visa card right now within their wallet. We see the company is very large with a market cap over $511 billion. They currently trade with a Ford PE ratio just over 42 and a very low current dividend yield of only 0.53%. So right now Visa does have a very low dividend, but this is a company that has long-term share price appreciation plus some very fast acceleration in the annual dividend payment plus a lot of share buybacks. So the total return on this company is very good. So overall, I don't own this company for the current dividend income. I owe them for the long-term cash flow I do think they'll provide me over the next 10 to 20 years. And if we take a look at the recent share price performance over the past one year, it's up 23%, but over the past five years, they're at more than 222% overall. And I think they'll continue this outperformance for long into the future. And the reason I decided to make this video specifically on Visa is because the company just announced that they're partnering with over 50 crypto companies to allow their clients to convert digital currencies when making real purchases. So right now, a lot of people are investing in multiple different cryptocurrencies, but don't have any way to actually use it and make it a form of currency. But Visa is partnering with over 50 different companies, pretty much the top names in the crypto space, to allow everyday individuals to use their Visa card and convert digital currencies directly into fiat instantaneously when making a purchase with a vendor. And what's really great about this new process is that it does not change anything for the merchant side. So for the actual store that you're buying from, nothing has changed. For them, it's a normal Visa transaction where they take your payment as if it was straight cash. But on the consumer side, if they want to use their digital currencies or their crypto to actually make a purchase, you can do that going forward through Visa's new partners. So right now, they think this is a major, major growth in the world of cryptocurrencies and the fact that the leader in the debit and credit card sector is partnering with so many different companies or to make this a mainstream service. I personally believe it will bring a lot more clients into the industry and it will also create a new major revenue generating activity for Visa because I'm sure they're going to collect a transaction fee every time you use crypto in order to make a real life purchase. So overall, I think this will have a great benefit to Visa in their top and bottom line and overall expand the current cryptocurrency market and combine it with real world transactions. So overall, this article is what inspired my video on Visa today. It's one of the top 10 positions within my current portfolio. And overall, in this episode, we're going to take a look at Visa as a whole, go over their recent financial performance, take a look at their dividend and dividend growth, and of course, analyze their financial statements and future growth potential. And I'll start off the analysis by saying that in 2020, Visa did see a slight decline in total revenue due to the global pandemic. So of course, Visa generates money through different transaction fees and different services provided when consumers spend money. So when you go through a prolonged period when consumers were saving more money than they're spending, retail stores are shut down, and international travel was completely closed, it got very hard for Visa to generate growing revenue. So they did see a slight pullback throughout 2020, but already we're getting some good news that at the beginning of this current calendar year, things are starting to come back. And if we take a look at their latest investor presentation, we can see that over the first few months of 2021, a major spike in total US payment volume, which is a great sign. And over the first quarter, they did see an expansion in total cards. Once again, a very good sign that more people are signing up for Visa products with the use of using these products, hopefully throughout the second half of 2021 and beyond to spend money and go traveling. And if we take a look at their cash flow, this is a very, very profitable business that generates a ton of cash year over year, which is why I find it a very attractive investment for my personal portfolio. And we can see in the last quarter alone, in Q2 2021, they bought back $1.7 billion worth of stock and paid out over $700 million in their quarterly dividend. So overall, this company does have a low current yield, but it's a cash flow machine, a very, very profitable business that I think has a wide moat and will continue to expand for long into the future and thrive after the slight pullback in 2020. 
And if we take a look at the dividend, the yield is very low at only 0.5%. The total net income pay ratio is very, very minimal, making up only 23% of their total net income, which I believe to be very sustainable and gives them a lot of room to continue to grow that payment over the longer term. And they have a massive five-year dividend CAGR at close to 18.5%. So you buy into this company right now, I understand you're getting a very low current yield, but it's compounding and it's growing at a fast rate year after year. And of course, if we take a look at these numbers, the low payout ratio, the high cash flows, this company has a very safe dividend coming in with a 99. So very unlikely this company cuts their dividend anytime soon. And like I mentioned with Visa, they do a ton of share buybacks year after year. And earlier in 2021, they announced an $8 billion share buyback program for the next 12 to 16 months. So overall, this company provides a ton of cash back to the shareholders through the form of stock buybacks. So although the current dividend yield is on the lower end, only at half a percent, you're getting more cash returned to you in other ways. And we can see over the longer term, Visa has bought back more and more shares year after year. And the outstanding shares remaining continues to fall to record lows. And currently, there's only around $2.44 billion currently trading on the open market. So right now, the company has done a great job returning capital to their investors. And as time goes on and Visa continues to buy back more stock, my current position in the company will grow without me having to invest any more cash to purchase any more shares. And now if we take a look at the company's financial statements, they've done a great job of expanding over the past five years. Starting off with the income statement, total revenue continues to grow year after year after year with only a slight pullback in 2020. And if we take a look at total revenue, 15 billion back in 2016, up to 18.3, then 20.6, all the way up to just below 23 billion in 2019, and a slight pullback to around 21.8 in September of 2020, and overall during the past 12 months, around $21.3 billion in total revenue. So not a major pullback, but total sales are down as of late due to the pandemic that took over the world. And if we take a look at their bottom line, we can see that Visa does average over $20 billion of top line revenue. And if we take a look at their net income, they are extremely, extremely profitable with a net margin right around 50%. A net margin of 50%. So after all expenses and cost of goods, the company still nets 50% income, which is absolutely insane. Very, very profitable. And like we can see over $10 billion of net income during 2020, down from the 12 billion back in 2019. But I do believe as travel begins to open up like we're seeing right now, these numbers will continue to grow and Visa will be in a great position over the longer term. And next, we're gonna take a look at the company's balance sheet and Visa has over $26.9 billion of short-term assets on the balance sheet. And if we compare that to their short-term debt or the liabilities due within the next 12 months, that currently sits at only 12.7 billion. So their current ratio is above two and over the shorter term, they're in a very strong financial position. And if we take a look at the total assets, they come in at over $80 billion, but keep in mind Visa does have a lot of other intangibles and goodwill sitting on the balance sheet that are non-cash assets. And if we take a look at the liability side, total long-term debt hovering around $21 billion, I do believe is at a very manageable level and not worried about the long-term debt sitting with the company right now. And if we take a look at the equity portion of the balance sheet, the third section, total equity does continue to slightly grow over the long term, which is a nice sign to see as well. So overall, Visa in their balance sheet is looking like a pretty good position right now, and analysts do believe the stock is a buy. If we jump over to our first analyst report, 44 people were surveyed, there's 14 strong buys, 26 buys, and only four holds. No one is selling out of this company right now, and it is pretty much considered, in my opinion, a very strong buy with how these analysts are rating it. And we can see over the past six quarters, they've only missed on expectations once, and it was a slight 0.2% miss on their EPS expectations. And over the next two years, annual revenues forecast to hit $23.6 billion in 2021, followed by some major expansion of over 19% to over $28.2 billion in 2022. So by year end 2022, we're expecting close to 30% annual revenue expansion from their current level. And if we take a look at their future growth in terms of earnings, Simply Wall Street is showing 20% estimated growth per year over the next three years. And from their current position, we can see a very profitable company with total revenue and income at a high level, and that continues to expand through 2024 and beyond. So overall, the company is not expected to slow down whatsoever and annualized expansion of estimated to be 20% per year going forward. And of course, like always, if we jump over to Yahoo Finance, their analysts are showing a 19% per year expected growth rate in the stock. 
and they are currently considered a strong buy coming in at a 1.8 and the $235 price tag is below the 12 month expectation of $267 per share. So overall analysts are liking the company right now. They think Visa is a strong buy and although they are trading near all time highs, definitely a company to keep your eye on. So in this episode, we took a look at Visa, the strong dividend growth company, the leader of the credit and debit card industry that I hold in the top 10 of my total financial freedom portfolio worth around $110,000. Of course, this video was sparked by the fact that Visa is going to allow cryptocurrency purchases at over 70 million merchants all around the world and definitely a new expansion plan for some great revenue and exposure to cryptocurrency going forward. So overall, now I'm going to wrap up the video. I appreciate you watching all the way to the end. Please hit that like button and subscribe if you already haven't done so. And I will see you in tomorrow's episode.